Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Guys here, bringing you my review for Underworld Blood Wars. And I overall really enjoyed this movie because it moved at a nice pace. I didn't feel like it really lagged too much, even when it was giving exposition. And I felt that the action scenes were actually pretty well done. And I think it was a pretty good way to like reintroduce it to people who are fans of the franchise and people who are just like, eh. I kind of want to see what this franchise is about and see it in this first, you know, like, this is my first movie. Okay. Because in the beginning, it does a nice job of setting up, like, kind of what's been going on with Celine, all the kind of explanations of the other movies, up to the point where she's being hunted by both sides because they want her daughter, who, of course, Michael and Celine got together. Michael is the kind of hybrid werewolf vampire and of course their daughter would have really cool blood that would like amp up everybody else so each side kind of wants her for her daughter and also kind of just because the vampires are pissed off at her for all the vampires that she's killed the werewolves mainly are hunting her because they want her daughter so it gets into her getting in these action sequences taking out these werewolves pretty cool and of course she was kind of captured but she kicked their asses, and then, of course, David came in, and he was from the previous movie, who, he's also got the Corvinus blood in him, which allows them to walk in sunlight. That becomes important later on, because she, of course, sends the one werewolf to tell Marius to fuck off, essentially, because she doesn't know where her daughter is. She was hidden in such a way that she wouldn't put her in danger like that. Which, of course, is hard on her because it's like she's lost her and she doesn't know what to do with that since she's been a warrior this long. Being a mother is kind of an alien thing for her. So, of course, Celine and David go and find a safe house and then the coven, the eastern coven, sends a emissary pretty much to tell them, okay, come on in because they need someone to train their death dealer because their numbers are so low because Marius who's it greatly expanded the werewolf population, is pretty much putting them on their heels. If they're not careful, they're going to be wiped out. So they're like, all right, bring in Celine, she'll train death dealers and all that, and we'll be hunky-dory and all that. Well, of course, this the secondary antagonist, Samara, pretty much wants vengeance on Celine and pretty much wants to frame her and use her lover, which, of course, was... a Interesting kind of plot point because Chimera is really not nice to her lover and then the lover gets revenge later on in the film. And so I'm like, okay, that's actually kind of cool. He kind of does turn around and acts pretty cool in the defense of the coven. And, of course, Chimera is just wanting power and everything. She's the first new one on the council. It's like, yeah, this is my he. And I was like, okay, you could have done a little bit more, but she was done in a very kind of nuanced way other than like I want power because she at least put up the facade in the beginning and then once she figures out like the power of Celine's blood she's pretty much draining her to drink it and then of course David and his father engineer a scenario where they can get Celine out at the expense of the father's life and seeing David and Celine not burst into flames at the sun she's like I want this blood so we gotta strain it from the poison that we put into her and they're getting away to the Nordic Vampire Coven. And, of course, Marius is going after them. And they're kind of learning some more things at this Vampire Coven. Learning that David is actually the true heir to the leadership of the coven. Because he is also a pure-born vampire. And the son of Amelia, who they've been talking about through the film. I'm like, okay, I don't know who that is. But it's like, oh, okay, so she's like one of the pure-born as well. And that would make him... Pretty much a prince, and you get a cool ass sword and all that. Like, okay. Um, then we get into the, of course, werewolf attack on the Nordic Vampire Coven, and it pretty much beats the shit out of the Nordic Vampire Coven, and Celine is pretty much at death's door by Marius. And of course, Marius gets her to that point because he gets pissed off because his vampire lover taste her blood to get an idea of where her daughter's at and tells Marius that 
she's telling the truth. And of course, we see Marius transform in a way that's kind of different than most lichens have been transforming at this point. He retains some human physical characteristics. And then, of course, like, okay, hopefully that's explained later on. And of course, it is. And he's been using the blood of Michael. They've killed him, and that's what he's been doing to kind of, like, amp himself up. And I'm like, that's actually an interesting kind of way. And kind of cool that they got an actor to portray Marius that kind of looks similar to Michael. And it's like, okay. So, Selene, of course, enters this process of this sacred realm kind of thing to gain the powers of the Nordic vampires as well and to survive. And that's kind of taken her out as David goes back to kind of help the coven as it is attacked, of course, by Marius. And final kind of stand going on, which has a pretty cool battle scene. The tactics used in this were kind of different because with the Nordic vampires, they were using older style battle tactics like sword and shield and crossbows, whereas the werewolves were using in the beginning machine guns and kind of modern tactics before transforming into their lichen forms. Here we get the kind of same tactics, except both sides had guns, and it was just a different kind of take, and I really kind of liked it. The action was well done, seeing the vampires slowly taken down one by one. But then we get the kind of weird spot that, like, Celine comes back, and she's like, uber badass one. That's fine, I get that. She can walk in the sun. How did the Nordic ones walk in the sun? That was my only real, real gripe with that. I'm like, did she, like, give part of her blood to each one to kind of make them into the Corvinus strain of vampire where they can walk in the sun. Otherwise, I don't understand how they were able to move in the daylight like that. Okay, but it helped. Reinforcements, of course, we get a bigger showdown between Marius and Celine, and that's where she learns about Michael and all that, and it's not really a protracted fight. After she learns that and takes him into a cage, she rips out his spine. Now, granted, it can be kind of anticlimactic, but she is amped herself up to such a warrior extent that she'd be so pissed she's like, that's it. You done. So, I kind of understand the why they went that way, because they also had the secondary fight between David and Symera, and she's like, oh, I drank the blood. I can stand in the sunlight. And then David smashes her in the <laughs> stabs her in the back of the head through her mouth with his sword. It's like, okay, she kind of deserved that. And then, of course, there's kind of a piece with, like, a triumvirate kind of thing of, like, David, Celine, and someone else from the Nordic Coven, I believe. And it wasn't very clear, but everything kind of wrapped up nicely. Celine being reunited with her daughter at the end, or, like, after she was revived from the Sacred Realm. It wasn't quite clear for if she will eventually meet her daughter again. I don't know, but it ended in a way that actually... Nicely wrapped up, kind of like all the conflicts and everything, kind of got the characters into different kind of positions, with Celine actually going from outcast and outsider to the position of high power with the vampires and able to affect change and to pass on what she's learned and to teach vampires to either more effectively combat against the lichens or to actually make it so that there can be peace between the vampires and the lichens. Because, as you can see, the vampires are still in a precarious state. Their numbers are not as great as the lichens. The lichens can just keep making people willy-nilly to build up an army. Vampires, it takes more time. So I'm going to be interested to kind of see where this is going to be going in the future franchise, in the future of the franchise, if there's a future of the franchise, depending upon how well this movie does. So... Those are my opinions on the movie. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.